Hey there, Taurus. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? This is um, going to be a reading for the sign of Taurus, as I just said, for sun rising and moon and for the month of May. Um, first of all, it's great to see everybody today. I've been receiving a lot of information, both in dreams and meditation, and um, I can't wait to share it with you. A lot of it makes sense today because we'll be doing it on Easter. So there's a, a symbol here in your totem, the caterpillar or inchworm that came through, which makes a lot of sense for um, sort of the energy around this day, irrespective of um, if you celebrate, what you celebrate, et cetera. So um, first of all, welcome. My name is Nicholas Ashbaugh. And the way that I structure the forecast today is in four major parts. The first part is uh, basically automatic writing, dream interpretation, and me sitting here and talking to my guides about an hour to an hour and a half before I get started to assemble all the messages. So um, the cool thing about the beginning is even if you're not sure of your sign, if you showed up today, you'll get a message for that first section. Um, the, the next part is definitely tuned into the sign that I'm reading for, um, so Taurus today. And the messages there will basically take whatever form they need to because I don't focus solely on love or relationships or job. I let the uh, Celtic cross take whatever form it needs to. And then I go into an expanded forecast where we look at health, wealth, love, and destiny afterwards. And that allows for all of that to come through. Um, after that, we'll go into what I call the soul path. So typically, whenever I do a reading, there's one or two issues that will pop up that just require a little bit more research. So we go deeper. And um, I don't just kind of leave a loose end if, if, I, if I can help it. So we'll go a little bit deeper into the third portion of it. And then after that, we will um, we'll do a meditation and integrate the messages. And I pull a final card at the very end where you have a chance if I didn't have something here that answered your questions to ask mentally, and I will then uh, read a card based on that. So as you can see, you get a lot here during this period. And um, although I don't take any questions during the reading, you should have your answers come through. Um, I already posted the videos for this month, so you can look at them on YouTube. This is for the next month, but the way that this works is it's really a six to eight week uh, reading from whenever you watch it. So uh, just show up, Stay, stick around and see if everything resonates. I hope it does and I'm really glad you're here. Thanks to my moderators uh, today, Maria and Dakota for helping out. Quick note before I get started, um, if you would like to show support while I'm doing the live reading today, um, there's a couple ways you can do it. Uh, if you are watching live, there's something called Super Chat and Super Chat, if I can get the sheet here, is basically you just click on this icon, you can send some support in the form of a sticker. I think it starts as small as 99 cents and it's very helpful because um, we'll be using a new deck today that I purchased with the funds from Super Chat. So thank you for helping out with that. I try to refresh um, my Oracle cards and, and tarot cards frequently using your funds. Um, you can also use the applaud button here, which is next to the like and share on a replay whenever you're watching it. And thanks already to all my channel members. I noticed that there's a lot of green text. Anyone that clicks join will get access to special emojis. And uh, I appreciate you guys showing up each and every month that makes a big uh, impact. Okay, let's talk about your channeled messages for this month, okay? So as I said, the um, I always like to start with a nature totem. I, I basically, in either in dreams or as I'm sort of getting ready in the morning, I will tune in and I wait for my guides to give me a sort of sign or symbol. What came through to me for you today is the inchworm. So we have the inchworm there and that's actually the moth that comes from the inchworm. Um, I was, I guess it's called a, geom a geometer moth. It's kind of interesting. I, I didn't know that there was a specific name for it, but here's the inchworm itself. Um, really cute actually, <laughs> even though it's a somewhat um, pesty animal because it can kind of, kind of come through and you know take all the foliage off something. It is kind of cute. It reminds me of um, Oscar the Grouch, right? That was his little pet was an inchworm, I think. So really cute. We're gonna talk about what this symbolizes for you today. So again, it actually is a form of a caterpillar. When I did some research, I looked that up and uh, I wanted to make sure and I was, uh, I was able to confirm that it was that. So um, basically you could consider it an, a caterpillar or it's a specific type of an inchworm. It yields a moth um, after metamorphosis. So it's not just a butterfly, it's actually a moth which has nocturnal sort of um, energy with it, which we'll take apart here in just a second. The first thing that I thought of because I am a science fiction fanatic was um, one of my favorite childhood books, uh, A Wrinkle in Time. 
I, I kind of I did a quick copy of the page here in particular. If you ever read the book, uh, let's see who it is, Mrs. Who? Mrs. Who, one of the misses, one of the witches basically in the book, she, um, she shows what a tesseract is by taking a, a string. There's this little ant moving across it. And this is the long path that all of us walk in a sort of linear life, right? And when you have a tesseract, you basically loop it up here and getting from point A to point B is faster because you don't have to go the long way. And when you look at an inchworm, what is it doing but taking its sort of hind and moving it up? It's the same thing. So here's the inchworm right here. And here's the um, illustration from childhood. It's just upside down, but it's the same thing, right? So I was looking at this and I was thinking, Tesseract, that's why this is coming through today. Um, so um, by the way, it's a cool book, really cool for young adults because it actually talks about space and time travel and science and science fiction and spirituality. So um, that's a Tesseract too, the sort of three-dimensional uh, cube there. So how does this relate to you? Well, um, basically through their, um, through I guess evolution, they found a way to move um, faster and smarter, saving time and energy. And in essence, you can make up for lost time and start to manifest more quickly. So unlike the little ant walking across the string as human beings, sometimes we can just have an epiphany and think of a better way to do it, or we can call in the connection because the connection isn't always something that you're walking or working towards. It could be a person. It could be sort of just an idea of how to, how to do something or something uh, along those lines. But the main thing here, uh, I wrote this in my book too, uh, practicality is sort of overrated. Don't be so practical, don't be so linear. Sort of bend the lines or bend the rules a little bit to think of another way to do it. You have to look at the situation from all angles and all dimensions, as I put here as well. So there's different ways to do this and it could require taking a leap out of 2D, 3D, 4D, 5D, go beyond what you think is possible and something really cool could happen as a result. This, in, um, this insect also symbolizes growth and transformation. Um, here's the interesting thing. It is still in the sort of caterpillar stage. So what that means for all of you this month is that there's development, metamorphosis, and change that is underway, but you, you actually aren't at the metamorphosis phase just yet because um, you're like basically what a caterpillar does is it eats all that energy up so that it can go through the change. So the inner growth is really what's happening over the course of the next six to eight weeks after you watch this video. And you may be doing things like the eight of pentacles card where you would feed the, the soul and the mind with inspiration or literally like education and training. Um, some, I often read inverted pentacles as like, or the, whenever you take like, um, the queen or the king and that's reversed or even the ace, it's sort of like, what do I need to, what work do I need to do on me? It's basically pointing towards you. So you have to sort of focus on, on yourself and also focus on the lower chakras. Do you feel safe? Do you feel secure? Can you express yourself? Where's your power center feeling like right now? Um, so pay attention to where the arrow is pointing. So if it's the lower three chakras, you need to work on that. And then you also need to sort of invest in yourself. So before investing in someone else or something else, the internal work needs to happen this month, okay? Um, because of the fact that this little inchworm will create a moth eventually, for many of you, inspiration can come during the nighttime. So um, you may see changes in your sleep and wake schedule. You may feel like getting up early in the morning. You may have a hard time falling asleep or you may get inspiration during dreams. And if you do get information in a dream, please, please, please wake up and write it down. I know it's annoying. That's how I got um, the next set of messages for you though. Uh, when I, I get messages all night. So uh, unless there's, if I'm not working, I can just have a normal night's sleep. But if I'm working, I typically receive something that I need to pay attention to for the next day. So I just wake up, I tap it in my phone and then I can go back to sleep. You can, you can get used to this and kind of good at um, sort of like logging in and out. You have to sort of log out of the dream for a second, write this stuff down and then log back in. You'll get better as you practice. But if you don't write it down, you'll lose some of that inspiration and you'll have a very hard time remembering the key details when you get up. Less is more. As I said, caterpillars often overconsume. Um, so going too far in any part of your life would be something that I would advise against. So whether that's eating too much, drinking too much, um, you know, we've sort of been cooped up in our houses for a while. So I would also say as you start to integrate into 
day-to-day life, also less is more. Um, we're still moving through this. We're not out of the, um, you know, the pandemic. So you have to kind of like re-enter everything easily and slowly and not kind of go all in um, <laughs> because there's sort of like the shock to the system. So everything um, at its own pace, right? Okay. Now let's go into some messages around uh, that I got from dreams and meditations, but it's really gonna be about relationships and communication. One thing that I, I'll I'll describe what I I saw and then I'm gonna go into the sort of elevated messages. I saw what looked to me like a disagreement, but over many years with with, um, like a friend or family member, it felt very close, familial, like it was, yeah, blood or a close friendship. And it almost felt like the tension had build, been building for a while and you'd kind of forgotten why you were arguing or fighting. And the message here was to kind of like let that go because I wrote a knife cuts both ways. It hurts you, it hurts the other person. And I, I got a lot of sensitivity on the other part, so much so that I, um, the person was crying. I could feel it. I woke up and I was like, why am I, why do I want to cry? So I, I feel like the, um, if you're having, if you're on the outs with anybody, or if your boss is driving you crazy, or if there's someone in your life and there's tension, the person's sad. That's what I picked up on. Um, yes, you're sad, but they're really sad. Um, and I just got this sense of despair that was setting in. So let go because you don't want to tug at that any more than you have to. So that's what I was picking up on. Let me talk about how I elevated it and kind of separated it into specific messages. So the first thing is um, arguments can be constructive. Uh, because you can learn things. It's kind of like debate. If you want to debate something, great, but stick to the facts and avoid fighting. Um, You can present a side, you can listen to the other one, you can say, I don't agree, but how about this? And you have a sort of back and forth. It's like ping pong, right? Um, If you care enough to fight, you still care, which is interesting, but communication is probably broken down and isn't as effective as it should or could be. So if there's any way to sort of stay factual, neutral, open, and then maybe sometimes say, let me sleep on it. That's a really powerful thing that I've learned later has actual power because you get to really sort of process things and get additional insight, right? So anyway, as I said earlier, when you hurt someone else, you actually hurt yourself as well. Um, Grudges and fights and even the pain that you're holding on to, when you start to let it go, Maybe it's not forgiveness, but maybe it's just releasing the need to exist in that energy. You start to feel better because you don't feel them anymore and you're not thinking about them anymore. It's like taking this, the uh, seven of cups card and just ripping it up and saying enough with that already. I'm, I'm tired of that energy being in my head, right? So as I said earlier, don't un- underestimate either side's sensitivity, yours or theirs. Um, I would say in general, people around you this month may just be a little bit more apt to get into an argument or just be a little bit more sensitive. So do what you can to to just make it a little bit more calm, easy, and welcoming for them to be there. This came to me just as I was writing, my guide sort of whispered this. They said, lead with love. Uh, Give people space for uh, them to sort of show up and grow or show a different side of themselves. We use this this term glass ceiling a lot of times to show like a gender bias at work and things like that. But glass ceiling can kind of also apply here. That's what my guides were giving me as well. Don't put a glass ceiling on someone else's growth and vice versa. It's time to let them be free and also to be free yourself. So if you imagine that someone always is the bad person or the good person or they're a flake or whatever, whatever verb or noun or adjective or whatever you put on them, they sort of gives them um, some sort of shape. If you can take it off for a second and just let them show up uh, without a preconceived notion of what they are, it gives them space to evolve. And maybe even if you sometime turn the table a little bit, I've talked about this with children, it's really effective. And uh, even with my my little puppy there who's napping, um, if he was mistreated, he's a rescue. I um, I didn't just go out and by the dog, I, I rescued a dog. Um, but when I, when I first got him, he was very, very shy. And uh, sometimes if you've met a child that's been through a lot, you never know what's going on in their life. Maybe they're just not focusing and they're acting up a little bit. What if you give them some positive reinforcement and do this with an adult as well? Let's say there's someone at work that isn't doing what they're supposed to be doing. 
take them aside, check in and say, how are you doing? And then say, you know, I really appreciate what you're doing here. I actually feel like you're a great asset with this. I want to shift the focus. Let's put you here where you can grow and thrive. They're probably going to be surprised that you're not yelling at them about not doing something right. Because when you get used to bad news, you expect it and you live up to it. When someone surprises you with a positive stroke, it's sort of like, oh, you like me or you thought I could, okay. It's almost like they don't know what to do. They'll probably, especially if there's arguing and things like this going on, change the tables around, turn the tables around and set them into a position where they can succeed for once. Um, I was grateful enough to have that experience as a kid where I was in a bad school system and I went into a better one and the support and the nurturing it, it took me all of one year to sort of turn my grades around. Um, so it's amazing what can happen when you believe in someone. So believe in the potential. You, you don't know what the story is. And I just saw sensitivity with others around you. So give them the benefit of the doubt. Give them a little bit more space. Unconditional love is really important this month. Um, so like a butterfly, um, let things kind of go. Let them fly. If it's going to come back, it'll come back. If it isn't, it's just, it's better that way, probably. Also, this is a little bit of like the um, Empress or Emperor card in reverse, where there's, it's sort of like trying to control every little thing. I would say the only way people can eventually grow is if you trust that they have the capacity to do so. So give them a shot. Maybe someone in your life has this idea of like, well, maybe we could try it this way and you're more linear. See if their, if their solution works. Maybe there is a shorter way around it. Maybe it's just something you hadn't considered before, right? For yourself, I think it's time to get ready to spread your wings. If it's not this month, it's soon. Uh, again, I'm reading for May, but some of these things may resonate um, here in April, in May, or in June, because I read for about six to um, six, six to eight weeks. So um, in the next couple of months, there could be something coming through where you're ready to make a change, leave a job, um, you know, start a relationship, leave a relationship, something big. But it feels like it should be something that you're moving towards, not moving away from. All right. The next bit of advice has to do specifically um, with like the five of pentacles, which is really interesting because in my newsletter, um, I, which by the way, I'll put a link to that. If you missed it, you can take a look at it on my website. Here it is. Um, in my newsletter, the five of pentacles came up as the center card. And um, five of pentacles for me invariably has to do with self-worth, even though it's a, a money card and it can... It, Sometimes it can just be about underestimating yourself, but usually there's a source to that, which comes from parents, mentors, or an experience that we had in childhood. So this month, there's a chance for you to unravel that. I don't believe it's damage. I would just say that impact that somebody had on you. So uh, my first message is sometimes parents, teachers, and mentors, they don't know what's best. They let us down. They're not prepared. They're not adequately sort of given the tools that they need to deal with whatever's in front of them. So don't let their lack of faith or experience um, affect your net worth or your self-worth because self-worth equals net worth. So just because someone else couldn't see it doesn't mean that it isn't. Um, so that's the same thing as you know being intuitive. Just because you can see it and feel it and others can't doesn't mean that it's not possible or that it isn't happening. It just, again, varying levels of sensitivity. Um, love and celebrate your own unique gifts and walk your own path don't look back don't keep focusing on that person from the past or that moment in the past it isn't a defining moment it might have been an inspiring moment to help you go down a different path but it doesn't make you who you are it doesn't equal who you can be it was just a moment in time it was just one person it was just their perspective um, specifically i saw a father figure here and it felt like they were trying to um, vicariously lived through you and they were frustrated when you couldn't do what they wanted you to do. So it could be a boss, it could be a parent, it could be a mentor, but it just kind of felt like I got paternal. I, I kind of try to read beyond gender. So if you have two moms, whoever sort of seems to be the one that's calling the shots or whatever, um, I just kind of felt like one of these people were in your life trying to sort of make you fit into a mold that wasn't you. You're not that cookie cutter mold. So be who you are. Don't look back and um, release judgments about them. And if you are a parent and you're kind of going through some of this, just let your kid be who they are or let, if you're a boss and someone on your team can't fit the mold, that's not them. Figure out if they are, if there's another place that you can put them um, in the team. And same thing with friend groups. 
Again, this is the glass ceiling. Let's break through the ceiling and stop labeling people, the good one, the bad one, the pretty one, whatever. It's not right. We, got, we have to get beyond the labels and I think that's gonna be key. Um, and the last and the most important thing, because I felt the sadness, um, because I felt the frustration, if you're the one that needs help, ask for help. If the other person in your life or someone in your life seems to be kind of um, struggling, then this is the time to step in and just try to be supportive and encouraging and nurturing and kind to them as well, right? The whole theme today, if you can't kind of see it, is transformation and healing and forgiveness. Um, because the inchworm, which is a caterpillar, develops into a moth, that's metamorphosis and change. It has a way of seeing things differently, like I saw. Yes, my dear, there is such a thing as a tesseract, to quote that line from um, A Wrinkle in Time. Yes, we can go beyond the expectations. Um, and then the second phase is about healing relationships, communicating better, releasing the sort of box that you were put in because to go back to a wrinkle in time, it's really much more three-dimensional. There's more than meets the eye. Um, I read this book when I was in the fourth grade. Yeah, fourth grade. Um, and this was one of the things that inspired me to write. Um, I also read, I think I read The Hobbit the next year and uh, Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. There's a lot of cool, really cool books at that period that I was reading. If you have a young adult in your life, these are all really great books. All right, let's move along to the, uh, the, the Celtic cross now. If you missed anything, don't worry. I always review these at the midpoint. Oftentimes we see um, sort of analogies between what came through in the, the Celtic cross and what I've talked about. So I will share it with you at that point. Um, I usually remain quiet while I pull, pull all of the cards, but don't worry. I'm going to pull each up to the camera afterwards so that we can talk about it and see it. Welcome to everybody um, that just joined. Like I said, we'll have a review at the midpoint, so don't worry. Um, this is the part that many of you love anyway, because we're going to be looking at the cards. Thanks again, again, for all of the support. I see some super stickers and super chats coming through. I'm using a new deck this month. I'll put the link on my website. Um, it's actually on Twitter right now. And, and if you go to my Facebook page and Instagram, I put the link already, but I'll add it to my um, website. This is Prisma Vi Visions Tarot, really cool deck. Um, I think the guy that does this, I follow him on Instagram. I think he does it digitally, but it, it's really cool. It looks like it's, um, it's done almost like old fashioned. It reminds me of something that is a cross between, um, almost like psychedelic, but also um, Vincent van Gogh, like Starry Night. You'll see it in just a moment. This can be used for sun, rising, and moon. It can also be used for other aspects of your chart like Venus. Because I am intuitive, clairvoyant, and a channeler, it may work even if you don't have Aries in your chart. So just stick around. I'm sorry, not Aries, but Taurus. <laughs> All right. So again, Taurus, sun, rising, moon, Venus, or anybody that's here, there may be a message. So um, just be patient. Your sun sign is your birth sign. I see a question. And yeah, I did feature this on an Instagram live. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, you should. Um, I do 
live videos there just like I do here. I don't typically repost them on YouTube because it's sort of a, it, it's a, the aspect ratio is different. So you should follow me if you don't already on Instagram. And sometimes I take questions there, which I don't have a chance to do here. So it's good to, good to follow me on both. Okay. Let's take a look at your messages. We're gonna start with the Catalyst card. And the Catalyst card is a way for you to basically stay in the highest energy, um, to keep yourself out of harm's way, to really just elevate things. And so your Catalyst is this, um, almost like a cosmic web here, right? And the message that I look at when, or that I see when I'm looking at this is, it's sort of like the web that we weave or the things that we create um, that matter. And um, one of the things for you is to understand that just like a web, I'm also thinking of a spider in the morning. One of the things that it has to do is sort of clean things up. So um, it will feed off of anything that came in there, but then it also sort of like recreates the web, whatever pieces are missing, it just spins it again. So you are the creator, you are that cosmic spider. Um, and you're able to kind of go in and create something that also is kind of sticky. So what I like about this card is it's showing your ability to attract and to hold on to something that matters. So if you've created it, if you've opened up space in your life, it's come to you for a reason and it's staying there for a reason. This also has a very similar energy to the inchworm. It's all about consuming, feeding, um, and getting some development in your life. So clearly this month, you're supposed to be focusing on personal development, ingesting, digesting, um, integration, all of that is coming through because both of these insects consume, okay? One thing you wanna be careful of with the web as well is to just take a look at the people around you. Are they giving um, or are they just receiving? Are they sometimes pulling you into their web? So allow this to be more like the dream catcher that we saw when we were looking at the wild unknown, which is what this deck is related to, um, where it's the wheel of fortune. So you can create what you need. I also see the wheel of fortune with this particular card, okay? So um, yeah, you're, you're more powerful than you think. The, um, the creative ability sits with you. I would also say the responsibility and accountability sits with you as well, right? So there you go. Let's look at the center card. We have the nine of cups, such a cute card. I really like this one. So the card was reversed, but let's take a look at it upright. Um, so the two of cups here, we see celebration. Um, we see um, connection. We see this sort of ability to also allow yourself to just let go a little bit here. I really see two people that are relaxed and just being themselves. So let's take this out of having to be with someone. So for me, the two of cups um, doesn't always have to be about love and romance. Two of cups, six of cups, um, lovers, four of wands. It's really about your ability to be magnetic, right? And the web is a magnet. So with the two of cups, I would say the fact that it's reversed is saying you should be focusing on what you're getting back from someone or something. Are the scales balanced? Do you feel like... Um, you know, you're receiving as much as you're giving. And then in other aspects of your life, don't underestimate your ability to attract or pull in what you're looking for. So if you're single and happy, the two of cups reversed is saying, um, you probably are worth more than you think, and you probably are giving some stuff away. So make sure that you are balancing out, again, the, the, the give and take. In existing relationships, lean on people. They've certainly been... Uh, willing and ready to receive your love and support. So let them do the same, let things sort of be balanced out. And if you are um, trying to sort of heal a relationship, this is about holding space. This is about letting people kind of come through and maybe just share their mind and like listen without prejudice is what I see with this as well. So open up, you need to let things go a little bit whenever the cups are re uh, reversed, but then you need to fill things back up. So it feels like in order for healing to happen in your life, in a existing relationship or in a past relationship, you need to kind of vent and then you need to figure out, all right, can we get back to that place of just enjoying one another? But in your life right now, irrespective of your relationship status, two of cups equals the ability to pull someone or something else in, very connected to the web card that we see here. So I feel like you're starting the month off in a really great place and you have the ability um, this month, Taurus, to do something exciting. 
and to make something stick, right? All right, we have the seven of wands on top of it. Don't force it. Don't force whatever you're trying to do. Um, so easier said than done, right? If you're trying to find a job, um, for instance, the seven of wands can be about not overwhelming the recruiter, not coming on too strong, doing just enough, but also making sure that you follow up. It's sort of this fine line between I'm here, don't forget about me, but also like not sending them 15 texts. Once is enough. Um, so if they're going to say yes, they're going to say yes. You do the one follow up and you let it go. Um, in a relationship, if you ask someone to do something and they don't do it, you can't force them. That was one of the messages I said, you can't force things to happen. But you could have a discussion about why they're not coming through, why they're not doing what they need to. It's interesting that sevens can be tricky, like the seven of swords is, is about either over committing or trying to get away with doing something or just outright not telling the truth. So with the seven of wands, if someone isn't being accountable, have the conversation about that. Even though it's seven of swords, you can avoid that happening in the long run. Just say, I'm not going to force you, but if this keeps happening, then it's going to become an issue. You know, um, What I like about the seven of wands is it is uh, indicative of the fact that you can do anything that you put your mind to. Look at that beautiful sort of starry sky there in the background. Um, to me, it kind of, it almost looks like a um, like a portal that's opening up, right? So what you want to do is figure out how you want to focus your time, energy, and um, make the most impact, right? So delegate when you can and realize you're just one or two steps away from the um, eight or nine of pentacles. And the eight of pentacles is abundance. The nine of pentacles, I'm not nine of pentacles, nine of wands. Um, uh, sorry, the, <laughs> the eight of wands and the nine of wands. So the eight of wands is literally like rockets flying in the air. And the nine of wands is showing like you can go through anything. You can fight anything and kind of survive. But what you have to do is not sort of like peter out with this card. So um, seven of wands is um, reminding you not to overdo it. Um, I mentioned eight of pentacles because developmental stuff is important this month. And by the way, we have both of them here. So I was looking at the eight and the nine. And this is where your energy should be focused um, in just a moment. So I don't want to jump ahead, but that's actually what we see here. Um, so sorry, my eye was skipping ahead and my voice was <laughs> flowing there. But I can still connect it, which is saying you have bigger and better things to focus on. So don't get lost in the small details, right? And yes, um, fight for what matters, but don't just fight for the sake of fighting. I see stand your ground. I think yes, dot, 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 but don't overdo it um, because sometimes this can be a defensive card, overly defensive. So you want to fight when it makes sense, but just don't fight for the sake of fighting. All right. Uh, we see a, a road to recovery here. I want to just pull the camera down for a second. You, your spread is dominated um, almost, yeah, I would say over half almost by... Pentacles. It's like wands and pentacles that were the most prevalent. We also have a, a couple, like we have swords here and cups, but it's mostly pentacles. So I'm looking at the past and we have the seven of pentacles. Um, we have an ace, which is an opportunity. And then this leads to something better, the eight and the nine. So I see you going from a place where you might be recovering to some really significant growth. So as you look at the past, don't focus on it too much. That's the message here with the seven of pentacles. The work that you have done is spot on. And that's exactly what you should have been doing at that moment in time. Okay. And I would say for many of you, um, focusing on potential, focusing on lessons learned, and then realizing that sometimes the universe will come back and test you. The seven of pentacles usually shows that there'll be a, a hidden test. And if you can pass that test, you're fine. So it could be a temptation. It could be self-doubt, et cetera. Um, just basically don't worry too much. You've done what you need to because I already see it here in the rest of the spread. The only thing that will get in the way is your emotions. We have the uh, page of cups here reversed. Ace of pentacles here, opening a new door. I really like that this is showing that you have to sort of walk through it or do something with it. Otherwise, the door will close. So as we look at recent past, which is going to resonate for many of you as you watch it live or even at the beginning of next month, um, this is something saying the door won't stay open forever. So there is a time limit or there is a time component to the opportunities in front of you. So walk through that door, it's time. It feels like you've done all the requisite work to call this into existence. Um, one of the really cool things here, I'll, I'll show you here, is that in this particular deck, they tell a story. So um, these three actually kind of tell a story here of growth, moving from the planting stage to the growth stage 
to um, almost the next stage, which is things reseeding. So um, not like receding and pulling back, but like seeds again. So I feel like you're in this nice um, wheel of fortune energy. I'm moving through the lessons of the past, creating a new opportunity and working with that. All right. This is also saying you're worth it, which is maybe the antithesis of something that you were hurt, you heard in the past. You are worth it. Open the door, go for it. I feel like there's something really great that wants to happen, but you have to be willing and ready to receive it. So are you ready? I hope you are. We have the three of wands here in the crowning position. You know, I love a really active three of wands. And this one is just that. Notice how the person is not sitting idly waiting on the shore or up on the hill. They're actually kind of working alchemically with all these little flowers. Such a beautiful, um, wands is beautiful because you can see all the stars at night, right? So this is the nocturnal energy that I mentioned earlier. Many of you are going to get some sort of a confirmation um, in dreams or meditation or daydreaming even. So when you're not focusing is when the magic starts to happen. You should start to get an indication though that you're on the right path. You should start to see things moving uh, this month. So if you've had stagnation in the past, you shouldn't have it now. Um, someone will pick up the phone and call. Something will finally come through. We're, we're kind of getting through that period of things being broken. <laughs> so the three of wands shows that it's better and it will continue to get better and you're on a three um, or four month trajectory for that growth to happen. You can't see it happening at nighttime all the time. So I actually like this three of wands because a lot of the growth, just like the caterpillar, is still within. If you ever look at like a, a YouTube video where they show, usually it's monarch butterflies. I know that there's a video for that, but you can see the phase where the caterpillar attaches to the tree and then it kind of sheds its skin. What's interesting is that already the change happened beneath the skin. And it's just in that moment that it sort of creates the, the chrysalis that you start to see it happen. It's really kind of magical. So um, like with the butterfly too, or the caterpillar, there's two or three phases. It goes into that and then it keeps changing within the, um, the chrysalis there too, uh, as well. So for you, there might be each month a big shift that happens with you from like caterpillar to chrysalis to butterfly. So that's what the three of, um, the three of wands is kind of indicating. It doesn't just, it's not like, all at once. We have to be patient with the unfurling of prosperity and growth in your life. Six of wands here is a return. Um, uh, for some of you, there could be a distancing or a leaving, but this card can be leaving or returning. Um, I'm kind of getting the message of returning. So maybe it's getting back to something that you wanted to do. Um, you may be finally able to travel again, which makes sense here. Um, but the other thing with this is that it's the gentlest of death cards, if you will. So four of swords would be a little bit more gentle, but um, we have like death. And I would say tower and world can also fall within that category of like big changes. Um, six of wands is really, um, actually, this is a very six of swords. You know what's getting me confused? Um, this is really interesting. Just a quick lesson on tarot. Um, it, originally, swords and wands were reversed. They've used the six of swords imagery and it's six of wands. Um, the reason it was reversed was they were afraid that there'd be too much power if the average person read them correctly. So in traditional tarot, um, basically uh, fire and air were reversed. So we have a little bit of that here. So I'll give you both interpretations because clearly this illustrator is using six of swords imagery for six of wands. Six of wands should be um, somebody uh, riding a horse going into the public and people around them. Six of swords should be uh, a person on a boat heading towards a destination. Really interesting. Um, so what we're going to look at here is success is happening, but what, what's necessary for the success, the typical six of wands, is separation, distance, or traveling. Um, and you need to move on to progress. So um, very interesting. And uh, I'll have to read up on this a little bit why they chose to swap the imagery here, but we're gonna read that there's an element of air and fire in, in um, wands and swords. So I'll, I'll try to give you both readings there. So some of you may, may need to step away from someone or something, but it's for personal growth. Success is going to be a part of this as well. So you're getting two in one with some of these cards, right? All right, the next thing that we wanna look at here is the page of cups, page of cups reversed. 
it's time to let go. As I've been reading cups um, for the newsletter as well, and for the live reading, it felt like a lot of cups were reversed. So I would say uh, for many of you, finding a way to channel your time, your energy, your experiences is gonna be so important. For those of you that might be later in life, um, post-career, just kind of retired, this could be writing a memoir. This could be sharing your experiences with, other, for, uh, for, with others. For some of you, this could also be a chance to um, talk to someone, whether it's a friend or maybe uh, if you need help, it could be a psychologist, but it's sort of like getting it channeled out so that you can be clear. Sometimes emptying the cup is good. And that's what we saw here with the Six of Wands, which has Six of Swords energy in it. Sorry if it's confusing, but we have a little bit of both here and you can see it. So separation is necessary for growth, release is necessary for growth. In order to do that, you have to let things go and clear the channel. So your channel being your mind and your body. So do what you need to to de detox this month as well, because this is your heart and soul. All right, we have the Knight of Swords. Um, this is a more traditional swords one. So it just feels like in wands, whatever, for whatever reason they were borrowing a little bit. Um, but for the Knight of Swords, fighting for what matters. This is the one where you have to, um, I would say, be careful with how you say something this month. Even though the card is upright, we see here that you might be fighting to correct something. You might be fighting because someone's not listening to you. Someone might be trying to reword what you're saying. So um, it's really important to focus on spoken and written communication. Uh, there's not a lot of nonverbal with this one. I would say it really is, has to do with the words, um, how they look, how they sound, and making sure that context isn't lost. Don't let someone else push you around either. This knight is uh, strong and valiant. And even though we have this sort of like beast here up, up above, um, I feel like he's got it. So you have to just stay strong, stick to the facts, as I said before, um, an argument does not have to be an argument. It can be simply an opportunity to debate and get to the bottom of something, an investigation. You can, you can kind of look at it from a more practical point of view. Um, all right, we have the Eight of Pentacles, which I was talking about at the beginning when I was looking at the uh, Seven of Wands. So we have uh, your progression, Seven of Wands, is actually leading you into a different suit here. We have Pentacles, it's growth. When you stop forcing or, or pushing energy, then all of a sudden you can start to invest. The fact that it's reversed really has to do with not denying yourself a chance to do something for personal growth. And if you failed before, you will not fail this time is what I see. So give yourself a chance to try again, to try anew. We have the nine of pentacles here, which is independence, um, which is abundance, which oftentimes has a snail, but doesn't today. Um, interestingly enough, snails also consume a lot. It takes a long time to get there. Um, so. This is well worth it, and it's well worth the energy that it takes to get to this point. So your long-term journey here is being able to sustain on your own, having a sense of independence, having an increased sense of self-worth, and having more than enough to give to yourself and to others. What you have to do to get there is to release the emotional stuff. And for success to happen, we have this tricky Six of Wands slash Swords card, which is saying that you have to move on in order to move into something bigger, better, and brighter. Some cool stuff there actually for you. All right, let's move along to the expanded forecast and we're gonna take a look at health, wealth, love, and destiny. So um, with the health card, what a great um, message, which is echoing what we were talking about with the Knight of Swords. Communication, really good communication requires both listening and also speaking. Um, so the most important and the most powerful thing that you can do or have done for you is to listen. If you're someone who's constantly there for others, a teacher, a reader like I am, a nurse, um, anybody that's sort of helping others, it's nice to have someone listen to you for a change. I think it's your turn. So go and find someone in your life that can just listen without offering advice. Ask for it if you need it. Sometimes you need to tell people how to show up for you. So you could say, I need, I need to talk. I don't need advice. I just need to sort of like, can I just vent? Can I just share something with you? And if you could just listen, that would be great. So just let the person relax and listen and empathize with you. And it's a, it's a nice thing to just be able to have someone receive. It feels like you need that. Um, you, can, you could be there for someone else as well. 
And then also intuitively, of course, listen to what's coming through. We talked about all of the dreams and messages that can nocturnally come to you. So if, you, um, if you're like me and you can do lucid dreaming, pay attention to it. And what I did in the dream where I felt the pain is I kind of pulled myself out and then I just watched what was going on because <clears throat> I realized that's not me, that's not my thought, but what do I need to learn from this? So I just kind of watched as a bystander and then I woke up and wrote it down. So um, listen and practice lucid dreaming. It's something that you can get better at, okay? Other aspects of health this month, uh, with the two of cups at the center, again, relationship harmony is going to play an important part to just your general health. So if you are taking care of an older parent, taking care of a younger child, um, maybe doing this primarily on your own, I'm getting a little bit of pain in my um, solar plexus. It feels like just some of you, there's this power struggle or there's just a lot that you're taking on and it feels like you would benefit by having some assistance, maybe hiring some help or asking for some help or again, doing something for you. The other thing that I'm seeing here with the six of wands, it would be good to get outside both Six of Wands and then the sort of Six of Swords energy that's in the Six of Wands have the same sort of connotation. Six of Wands is get out, see the world. S uh, six, of, um, six of Swords would be the same sort of thing, but one is to be seen and one is to see. And that's where this is a weird card. <laughs> it's the only one that I don't necessarily love, but I I'll have to play around with this deck a little bit more to see what they did with the rest of Wands. Um, but I kind of like that it's a little bit of both. So be seen and see others. Again, I think it's the kind of yin and yang energy that you need to focus on. Things will get better. And I think the important thing for you is I see not just um, recovery, but independence here in the long run. So for those of you fighting to sort of get back on your feet, I definitely see that happening. So take care of you, okay? All right, let's look at your wealth card. It feels like you might be in a place where either in a relationship or in a job where somebody isn't always seeing it from your point of view or even just from an impartial or neutral point of view. You could also look at your own impartiality. Are you impartial or are you sort of too close to the situation? So with work, kind of like the Six of Wands cards, it's, it's, a, it's, an, it's very hard for it not to overlap with relationships because you have relationships with the people that you're working with. So what I see here is it feels like it's time to um, to pull back a little bit, to get a bird's eye view on something. And if you feel like something's unfair, then it's time to step up and talk to them about that. Try not to get um, overly defensive. Try not to get angry. Try to show how and where they can uh, basically improve and why it may not be as impartial as it should be. Okay, so fairness. There's something that doesn't seem like it's balanced, fair, or impartial in the work or career sector of your life. If you're retired, you might wanna take a look at how your resources are allocated to make sure that they're balanced as well. Um, other aspects of work, it might require that you reach out. And because this is six of wands, it might also be step up. So again, we've got a split message here. The six of swords message, if this were a six of swords, would be that you have to go beyond the boundaries of where you're at. We're already doing that with teleworking and telecommuting, but this is even beyond that. It could be about like globalization. And then the other piece here is that you might have to put your face to the message or the business. Six of Wands is about being seen ultimately. So both things are required for success. And that might also mean that you're the one that is gonna challenge someone if you need to. And there's sort of like repercussions to that. So you just have to figure it out. Ultimately, I really like that we see our return on the investment. We have the um, eight of pentacles and the nine of pentacles. So investing in yourself, starting to grow, getting independence, um, getting a sense of having more than enough. So I like what I see with that. Let's look at love and relationships. I mentioned daydreams. This is interesting. <clears throat> and decisions here. So trust what's coming through to you in dreams and daydreams. If you're just sort of walking or trying to work, but something else comes into your mind. That's actually like the universe trying to poke a message in there. <laughs> uh, it's almost like what we see here with the Ace of Pentacles. Usually with an Ace, it's it's sort of the, the big hand in Rider Waite Smith. Um, so Ace of Swords, Ace of Pentacles, all of them will come with a um, sort of like an offering. So are you listening? Four of Cups has that offering too. People don't always listen to those sometimes when that's coming through. Um, this also kind of has a weird justice-like vibe with it. So for some of you, the decision's already kind of been internally made. 
usually when uh, justice is reversed, it's no or goodbye or separating. And the six of wands, which reads as six of swords is more of the same. And it's telling me that the separation, the withdrawal or the moving on is for your success and growth. So I think it was appropriate <laughs> that, that I uh, picked this deck where there's an imprint of the both, uh, the two of them on the six of wands. Um, so trust yourself, don't second guess yourself. And if it's time to move on, you're gonna be okay because your final card is the nine of pentacles, okay? One of my pieces of advice, if you're thinking of like leaving a job or relationship is sit down and do the boring part, which is to sit with a Microsoft Excel worksheet or pen and paper and just figure out how much is it gonna cost to do this? How much do I need? What's going on? Basically setting a plan in, in, in action and just seeing, do I have the resources to do what I need to do? Once you do, move on. That's what I'm seeing with those cards there. Um, it's, it's okay and it's time. If you're looking for love, I, I try to read all aspects. We're gonna do looking for love, in love, or could care less. <laughs> um, so if, if you're looking for love, what we see here is don't force it. Literally, two of cups reverse is one person feeling a little bit more comfortable with the relationship than the other, and this can be forcing it, so don't force it. So um, looking for love or in love, I would say it's time to balance things out. Let the other person get their head on straight, see if they're interested in you. And if you're in a relationship, um, you shouldn't have to force the person to do things. You might want to just evaluate, are you guys still compatible? Has something shifted? Because um, you don't want to have to nag or you shouldn't have to be the one that's always the authority. If you're single and happy, you don't have to work that hard this month. It's actually a really positive message for single and happy. This is releasing it and this is um, focusing on what matters and delegating, but not forcing it. So literally don't force it and let people come to you. But give the indication that you're open uh, because if you're kind of like this, the two of cups isn't gonna work. So you want to smile, be open, open up your heart space and welcome in opportunities because they're knocking on the door and it feels like the hard work is paid off. Don't get lost in any of the doubt from this. So um, if you're single, happy and focusing on career, then there's something knocking on the door, go for it. Uh, whatever you're trying to do with relationships, I see success. So if you're trying to leave one, you can do it. If you wanna heal it, it feels like you can, but the, the challenge here for those of you that are having trouble in relationships is emotions get in the way of the words or you get choked up. Um, yeah. <laughs> the words don't come out right. So focus on really trying to get clear on what you're trying to say before you say it. And um, overall, the only thing that could get in the way of success in general, irrespective of relationships, is with Nine of Pentacles reversed, there is a tendency to say no to help or an opportunity when it's actually positive um, because you want to do it on your own. So you don't have to always do it on your own. If there's something good and it can actually add to the growth or um, help you, then you want to evaluate how to do that. Okay. Also look at the contractual details. This is again, a little bit of an overprint between work and relationships. Eight of pentacles is the small print. Usually you would see someone, um, kind of like on a production line, hammering things out or writing things down. It's the, the phase at which you would be editing, which you would be perfecting, which you would be, um, polishing things off. So, in a contract, especially a marriage contract or a prenuptial or uh, a job contract, look at the small print because that's your new relationship. It may not be as even as it should be. And this is where you wanna push a little bit. And this is where you wanna speak up and say, um, hey there Goliath, I have, I have an idea. This is the, we need to change this, this and this, okay? So that's what I'm picking up on. Overall, it's pretty good. Just don't second guess yourself. You're receiving a lot of things through intuition. So third eye is wide open and you're getting lots of signs and signals. So just allow them to come through, right? All right, let's look at your final card. Um, we have basically the equivalent of the tower reversed. And so this is destiny and destiny is not set in stone. It's something that you actually affect each and every day, each and every decision, each and every word you say. <clears throat> we have Shiva the Destroyer. So for me, this would definitely be like the tower because it's about bringing things to their foundation. Um, the card reverse though is saying, I'm actively going to redo this. Sort of like if you go into a house and decide like, all right, we're gonna demolish this wall. We're gonna add something here. It's basically that sort of mentality, 
it's not working. I know it's not working. So rather than watch it fall apart, I'm going to take it down and then rebuild. So ultimately, one of the things that you might be focusing on is, is it easier to start from scratch? Are there some things that you need to sort of knock out of the way before you can get to the next phase of growth and development? If so, don't be afraid to do it. Shiva is a very strong deity. Um, I actually think there's sort of an analogy between Shiva and even Archangel Michael because we have different world religions just see things in a different way and give it a different sort of character. But this this one is able to sort of like stomp on the on the backs of demons and things like that, right? So I feel like um, we can do some of the same thing here in our own life. We can get through any of that. You can call on Shiva, you can call on Ar Archangel Michael and you can say, protect me, help me have the strength to fight for what matters. And let's get rid of some of the garbage. Enough is enough, right? So I really like it. And I like the divine, um, there's some divine masculine energy in this too, which is just saying you've got to do what you've got to do. The serpent here is also showing your strength. And by the way, that's our little inchworm. Um, so sometimes a little decision, a little move can actually have really big ramifications and change the whole trajectory of your life. One small decision, that little inchworm can actually kind of be more like this um, serpent that we see here, okay? So never underestimate the power of a thought or a decision or a word. And um, yeah, great things can happen. Let's do a review, especially um, knowing now what this artist did with the Six of Wands. Um, sometime I'll do a, a video on that. I remember when I learned how to read initially, my um, teacher at the time said, you're gonna have to make a choice and decide if you're gonna read wands as wands or wands as swords. Um, and likewise, swords as wands. So um, if you ever then kind of completely reread them, it, it kind of, it takes the foundation of tarot and it rearranges everything. Um, so like, what if the three of swords were the three of wands, right? What if the pain was actually making you grow um, and giving you some sort of context? We see that in one of my other favorite decks, which is the, um, the little prince. Sometimes what we think is painful actually came through for growth. So there are already kind of like an overlap of messages in it. So um, something to think about whenever you see one of the, the, the swords cards, there's actually a hidden opportunity within it. The 10 of swords allows you actually to get to the 10 of wands, which is moving on. It's a full stop. So I always see a nice relationship between them and it helps you not be so afraid of looking at the swords cards. So anyway, let's go to a quick review and then we're gonna go a little bit deeper. Um, so uh, your spirit totem today was the inchworm, which is basically a form of caterpillar. So don't get confused by the misnomer. Um, that is important because it goes through a metamorphosis. Um, Inchworms basically reminded me of the example that I pulled here from A Wrinkle in Time, where we see the ant having a choice of walking on the straight line or being able to just get past all of it and, um, and go somewhere faster. So when they take their body and just move it, they don't have to move the whole body along. It's just that little tiny piece. It's a lot more efficient. Um, so sm working smarter this month is important. And that's what we kind of see with the seven of pentacles, the eight of pentacles and the nine of pentacles is this sort of ability to take less and make it more really. And you, you're figuring it out here too, that seven plus uh, one is the eight that we got there. So um, anyway, it feels like you're integrating lessons and doing well with respect to that. Um, also you can, uh, find a way to manifest a little bit more quickly. I mentioned that a single thought can move mountains sort of. So if you're willing and ready for that to happen, just change your mind and you'll change your future. You have to look at things from all different directions and dimensions. As I showed you that picture in the book, um, a tesseract is actually a, a three dimensional object, not 2D. So I would say you can even go beyond that to 4D or 5D looking at it beyond the beyond. Um, don't be overly practical or linear bend the lines and look look at it from another direction. And that's why Shiva came through. I can't remember which sign I read for last month, but I had a message of if you're stuck, kind of like be like the architect and just push through the wall. That's what Shiva's saying here is like, just move through that boundary. You're gonna be able to find a better way anyway. The inchworm also symbolizes growth and transformation. It reminds us that growth happens one little step at a time. And also you have to go through all of the stages here, which we saw in the three of wands. So it's the growth stage, it, then it's the metamor metamorphosis or change stage. And then it's the end where the butterfly is gonna go and lay eggs again. And it sort of all starts, it's, it's a cycle, but I see three parts, three months. Don't rush through all of those processes. Um, know that the change is already happening. Inner growth is important this month. 
this is definitely a training card, the Eight of Pentacles, and it will lead to independence and the Nine of Pentacles. Um, so feel free to sort of invest within. It's well worth it. Inspiration can come at the strangest times, especially in dreams or especially in the evening hours. So open yourself up to receiving that and make sure that you, um, you do your best to write everything down when it happens. Um, you might notice a change in your sleep schedule. You might suddenly be a night owl. And if that happens, then honor it and do something with it. Um, if you're starting to get fatigued, though, do what you need to to regulate that. Less is more. Everything that I've been looking at today seems to be sort of about consumption, the spider, um, the inchworm, and even the snail that's missing from the nine of pentacles, which is, but, but it's none of, nonetheless already in that card. So consume, consume, consume. At some point you want it to take a break though. So if you're trying to work really hard to graduate or learn something, don't overdo it. And if you're trying to get back out there in the world, don't overdo that either. Less is more, baby steps. Um, stick to the facts and avoid fighting. Uh, we saw that here with the Knight of Swords. You're going to pick your moment wisely and you're going to pick your words wisely too so that they can't be used against you, so that you're going straight to the source if you need to, etc. cetera. Um, remember that if both parties care, there's actually still passion and concern. Just try to make it constructive. Try to stay neutral. A knife cuts both ways. Release the anger and grudges if possible. And it's really interesting because that's what we kind of see here. Just sparring of words. At a certain point, it just becomes a lot of words and you forget why you're fighting sometimes, right? <clears throat> Don't underestimate your sensitivity, which we see here with the Knight of uh, Cups here, Knight of Chalice, or sorry, Page of Chalices. Um, and don't underestimate the sensitivity of others. Since it is a page and not a knight, one of the things that you wanna focus on is, are you reading too much into it? Because Page of Cups reversed and the Seven of Wands can be getting defensive over something too quickly. Um, have a conversation with the person and say, I heard this, did you mean this or did you mean something else? Clarify before reacting. That's gonna save you a lot of time in the long run. Um, and also see how that other person is doing before you have a conversation. Ask how you are and really give them time to say, I'm good or I'm bad. Say, is this a good time to talk? And if their body language says something different than what their words say, then reschedule. All right, um, lead with love. Easier said than done, but so powerful. If you lead with a smile, if your words are warm and inviting, uh, it's gonna be so much easier to have a conversation. Uh, it, it's sort of like if your parent ever said your full name <laughs> and said it very sharply, you knew it wasn't good. Um, or if your partner always calls you honey or baby and then all of a sudden they're using your, your full name, you know something's wrong. So try to, um, try to be warm, try to be inviting, try not to have a sharp tone. That's going to help quite a bit. Don't put a glass ceiling on someone else's growth. Let them reach higher. Let them be better than they are. See them and let them see themselves in that higher light. Like a butterfly, unconditional love is really important. Release the need to control or to be controlled or to have that sort of battle. It, it sh there should be much more openness um, in all relationships this month. Spread your wings if necessary. We saw that with the six of wands. For some of you, maybe someone's trying to hold you back from being seen because this is a visibility card. For some, it might be about um, not wanting you to be out of their sight. Either way, that's a control issue again. Um, do what's necessary for growth and health and well-being. Uh, that's the most important thing at the end of the day. We love parents, but sometimes they just don't know what to do and um, they don't have the capacity to help us. Same thing with parents, teachers, mentors, and bosses. Um, forgive them this month if you can or release the grudge because otherwise you're, you're holding yourself back as well. Love and celebrate your own unique work and gifts and um, understand that you don't need to accept. You can kind of just think to yourself, I reject your, um, your lack of faith or your lack of um, trust in who I am. Uh, don't try to force anything or anyone into seeing something. Release judgments as well. It's, it's so important this month to just not fight unnecessarily because there's a lot of growth here that wants to happen with Ace of Pentacles, Three of Wands, and Six of Wands. Let that really nice energy around the Celtic Cross uh, do the work that it needs to. And then uh, ask for help if you need it. It's a sign of strength. Help others if you can. It's really good uh, karma and it's good seva. Um, you just don't want to, you don't have to get anything back in that situation. You have a sort of sticky, attractive, and magnetic energy this month in the best possible sense of the word. If you start to think in a higher way or act in a higher sort of frequency, you'll pull the same things in. If you think lower frequency, you're going to pull that stuff in. So stay high in your energy and your thoughts. Clean things up. We see a nice, clean, um, 
spider web here. Like I said, sometimes muck and dust and old things are stuck in there. You want to let it go and keep a nice clean um, sort of platform from which to launch the month ahead. Two of cups, seven of wands, as I said, don't force it. Be open. Things want to come into your life. It should be easier. Seven of pentacles, you did the work and wow, is it paying off here? You have an opportunity knocking on the door. It's open. You should walk through. We see the eight of pentacles, which is a chance for you to, um, to invest in yourself if you want to. We see independence on the horizon there. So I'm really excited by your overall resource cards this month. Three of wands, work is happening. Um, progress is happening. I like that we see someone who's really actively a participant of that creative energy. I love an active three of wands and we see it there. Six of wands, which looks like six of swords, which has both connotations, distancing, moving and growing all interconnected. Don't be afraid to let go because the door is open. And that's kind of what we see here when we look at it on both sides, an open door and one that's kind of closing. So you're somewhere between this sort of revolving door here. Don't force anything. Again, that's what I'm really getting with the seven of wands. Let go, release, let someone listen to you, let someone support you. It feels like um, there's a lot of movement that can happen and will happen if you just release. Um, Knight of Swords, don't let your emotions get in, like the Page of uh, Cups here, get in the way of the Knight of Swords. <clears throat> so I would say um, keeping your emotions under control, speaking up when you need to, but not fighting just for the sake of fighting, so important. Eight of Pentacles, personal development and growth. Nine of Pentacles, independence. They're both reversed, so don't deny yourself the chance to grow. And don't be so fiercely independent that you um, walk away from a really good opportunity. Health, listening is so important. Make sure you're listened to, make sure others are listened to, and listen to your body. Um, I kind of missed that the first time, but I'm picking it up this time. And when listening to your body, I would say the important thing here with the seven of wands, it could just be about how the stress is feeling. Sometimes this can be about... Um, holding on to stress in your body or feeling a little bit almost like you're stretched thin, like a, a like a rubber band. So do what you can to be kind to your body and to repair. I think that's super important. If people aren't listening to you, it's important to speak up for yourself. But again, try to find a neutral way to do that. Impartiality seems to be lacking in work relationships or matters of money. Um, so find more balance. Um, you know, all of these cards, these two cards in, in particular, kind of remind me of justice. And it feels like you know what you need to do. And if the scales are not balanced, then it's time to find a way to get more balance in your life and relationships. Let that other person show up. Sometimes if you keep doing all the work, they won't do it. So let things go a little bit. Um, you know, don't do the dishes, don't do the laundry. When they say, where is it? Say, I don't know. Did you get a chance to help out? I've certainly done the last 10 loads. See if they can help out. You don't want to get passive aggressive, but you could just say, I really need some help. I'm tired. Can you do it today? Well, let them, let them show up. And um, part of that I've talked about, even in an office is if, if you try to do too much work, sometimes um, they never see that there's a need for more. So let that kind of need be seen and then um, hopefully the things will get balanced out. If you need to move on, move on. If someone's not being fair, this six of wands shows that movement equals success. So there you go. With relationships, it feels like you already know what you need to do. We have decisions reverse, which is like judgment reverse, which means that there's something that you know is necessary or better, but for some reason you're, you're withdrawing or withholding a little bit. Independence plays a big role this month. Conversations are get, getting a little muddied or murky by the, um, the emotional component. So you really wanna keep things on a higher level. And as I said, don't force anything. If you're single and happy, some really great things are happening with um, your ability to pull in new opportunities, particularly money and abundance. So I feel like you're on the right path here. Finally, deciding where, when, and if you want to rebuild things with Shiva. She's, uh, or he's basically the, um, the equivalent of the tower card reversed. Interestingly, with um, all deities, especially a lot of the um, Eastern deities, there's usually feminine aspects too. So she wasn't necessarily wrong. They don't really work with gender pronouns. And in the book that I wrote, um, I believe the deities are beyond gender pronouns as well. So he, she, who cares? <laughs> it's all the same. All right, let's go a little deeper into the soul. I want to look at, there's a couple of things I wanna look at. Um, I wanna take a look at the balance dynamics and the relationships. I'm not someone who focuses solely on it, but the fact that we have a love card, the two of cups at the center and it's reversed, is telling me how can we balance out key relationships in your life? B 
be it love, family, um, or work, whatever makes sense for you. Someone that you love, but maybe you're having a hard time talking to because you're getting emotional, or maybe they're not listening to you because they're wrapped up in work or fiercely independent. Like what can we do to break through? So let me give these cards a nice good shuffle. And let's take a look on the soul path of how to balance or better exist within these relationships. Okay, we have the Nine of Swords. The Nine of Swords is reversed. Um, it's really interesting. I'm gonna show a close up of this one. We see the beast again here, and we see someone just looking straight up at the Nine of Swords saying, I'm not afraid. Um, and that's the most important thing, releasing fear. This is the least sort of scary Nine of Swords that I've seen because the person's just looking at this and thinking, okay, kind of like when I had the dream, is this real or is this not? Um, and I think that that's a really healthy way to sort of face things that are scaring you. Think, all right, why am I triggered? It's kind of going into an analytical part of your mind. For those of you that might have, this will be helpful if you have like Capricorn in your moon. This will be helpful. I'm trying to think what else might be Libra in your moon, um, or you might be a Capricorn or a Libra in your sun. Um, th this would help you because you have the ability to look at it from a different angle. Um, so don't go too much into your emotional side. Um, and it's hard, right? Because <laughs> Taurus, you just want to kind of like push through sometimes. And I, I have a Taurus moon, so I get it. Um, and it can, it can kind of be really hard if it's in your moon because sometimes you get protective or you overreact, right? So what you want to do this time, thankfully I'm Libra sun, so I can kind of pull it up and I'm Cap Capricorn ascendant. So I try to pull it from different points of view and that helps. And that's what you could do this time is lean on the other aspects of your chart. And even if you don't have it in your chart, think it through is what this card is saying. And don't be afraid to look at something that scares you. It's gonna be okay. That's what I get with this. It's just a dream or it's just a, a fear. Um, and once you, and I did the same thing in my book, once you kind of look at the monster of fear face to face, it can dissolve because you just see through the shadows, right? So anyway, <clears throat> let's take a look at, well, actually, uh, last thing here with Nine of Swords. A uh, couple of other things, if I look at the traditional meanings of this. Sometimes things are better than they seem. You're making it out to be worse than you think it will be. Because the Nine of Swords is sort of like, oh my gosh, what about this? And then this is going to happen. So don't get ahead of yourself. Let people show up. It's sort of like a conversation that you need to have. Um, I quit. I love you. Uh, I need to move. Whatever it is, something big, a big life shift. A lot of times in your head, you rehearse it like 13 times or maybe a <laughs> hundred times. And then when you have the conversation, it's much easier. The person already has a feel, yeah, I figured that. They're like, okay, that's fine. Let's, we'll make it work. And you're like, that's it. I, I stayed up all last night worrying about it. That's why you see the person sleepless normally in that card. So my message to you is face your fears. Things are gonna probably be a lot easier than you think. Lean on somebody to support you if you need it because you have help. Um, you might just have to ask for that help. And it feels like all of this is leading to growth and abundance in the long run. So don't be afraid. That's the message. And if you have to have a difficult conversation with your partner, um, whether it's a love partner in love or partner in business, better to have it now than later. Better to do it before it gets to, because the next thing would be an argument. Nine of swords is fear. 10 of swords is an argument or pain or breakup. Have a conversation, it's better. Okay, and everything else in your spread is pretty bright, literally, like you have so much fiery energy coming through. I feel like you're gonna be a-okay, all right? Let's take a look at, I'm, I, I'm kind of fascinated by the Six of Wands card and the Three of Wands. So Three of Wands is going to be success and, and things happening. And the Six of Wands has this weird imagery on it. So I wanna go a little deeper and say, what is it about moving on or letting go or whatever that you need to focus on? Ooh, I like this one a lot. Okay, you've got so, <laughs> you have so many pentacles. This this spread it's kind of funny, um, but this six of pentacles is fantastic. A very different version of the normal six of pentacles. Normally, you would see 
um, a person holding scales and coins and deciding who to give the, the coins to. In this one, we see teamwork. Um, and it really goes to the center card. So we have like the two of cups here, and then we have that partnership coming in and helping you out there in the long run. So the six of wands tells me that your next move, if you're thinking of moving on, moving out, doing something that's uh, involving separating or traveling, there's someone that can help you. All you have to do is call basically for this to happen. It almost looks like they're connected even though they're not, they're different suits. So just reach out and ask. It feels like that's, that's someone that can give you a hand. The other thing with the Six of Pentacles is it's a decision of how much. You don't have to do everything. There's a, um, a it kind of is a, a piggyback over what we just talked about. So you have more than enough as long as you don't try to do everything. We see the person standing on the other uh, five pentacles and sharing or handing over that one pentacle. So it's a decision to invest in someone or something that's really gonna return on it. And then it's gonna give you more of the growth that we see in the long run. Um, this is the requisite card that I see uh, that you would need for success in business, in love, and in life in general. It means that with proper balance and with proper moderation, you will be okay. So just make some smart decisions. Um, don't, like I said, if there's something that tempts you from the, uh, from the past, you've overcome it, right? You're ready now for the future. It's all part of the big puzzle, <laughs> literally. So you're ready for this step, okay? Let's do a wild card for the future. And then um, after this, I'll ask you to think of something. We'll meditate and I'll pull an extra card. But let's do the wild card first. For the wild card, I'm just curious, like, how you can be more successful. What can you do this month to more um, successfully accomplish your goals and dreams? Three of Swords, and it's so interesting that I just mentioned what if the Three of Swords was a blessing. So um, let go is what I see. Um, it's uh, There has been something in the past here that perhaps constituted in your mind at least some sort of a setback or some sort of a heartbreak or, or something like that. What we see with this card, I mean, it's a little bit macabre, but it's also symbolic because we're talking about death and rebirth. So we see an animal here that has the swords in it, but that animal is going to go back into the earth and this is all going to be part of a process. It's, it's, it's done and it's over. So this is the past and this is going to be fertile ground. And just like that card that I was talking about in the, um, the little Prince deck, what I would see here in the spring is a lot of growth, a lot of movement. So what's done is done and your heart is now free. Your heart is free to love again. You're free to live again, and you don't have to hold on to this anymore. We see the wind of change, uh, the winds of change, I should say, in the background, moving this past. Um, so, I believe that that's also why you're meant to move on. It's sort of like the wind is blowing you into a newer and a better tra trajectory here. Uh, so, yeah, it's time to move on. I, I keep getting this sort of gentle nudge for you. Uh, and remember that every disappointment, every setback is actually giving you sort of fertile ground to be more successful, to be smarter, to be stronger in the future. So if we look at all three of these cards together for the soul path, and then we'll do meditation, then I'll do another card at the end, which is like my almost personal reading for you. Um, we'll start off with the don't be afraid message here with the nine of swords. Things are not as bad as you might be making them out to be. Just look whatever's scaring you straight in the face like this like this little kid and saying, I'm not afraid of you. Um, in fact, I'm gonna figure out what I need to do so I won't be afraid of you in the future. Ask for help, you have it. Um, make some smart decisions about not overdoing things. Moderation is key to success. And then looking past a potential pitfall and using gratitude um, to help you think like, how could I be, how could I see this as a blessing? How could this possibly help me not make this mistake in the future? All of those things are going to be important to you. One of the other things that I'm looking at with this, um, there are two things on this because I'm seeing the antlers. So I'm thinking of psychic downloads, which we were talking about. I think it came through, let's see, health, wealth, love. It came through in love. So listen to what comes through because you can also avoid this. If I think back to a few of my mistakes in both like business and also relationships, it would be where I met people 
sometimes a group of people. And I thought, mm -mm, this isn't good. But sometimes you would still engage working with them or something like that. And later I, I, I then would have to experience the three of swords, but I had the, that sort of cosmic download that came through my antenna or my antlers and I should have listened. So listen, cause I feel like you could actually avoid this completely just by listening to yourself. Okay. Okay. Let's, um, let's quickly meditate before we do that. A couple of notes at the very end of every reading, I pull an extra card. So even while I'm talking, I want you to think of something that I didn't have a chance to answer today. Hold it in your heart, hold it into your, in your mind. After the two minute meditation, I will answer that question. Um, anybody that would like more information about me, I pinned a link from Dakota at the top. You can go to my website. It has information about my book. It has information about the schedule, how you can support me, all of that. Um, if you'd like to join, you can, you can do that just by clicking the join button. I think it's actually around the dollar sign too. It's all within that. Um, if you would like to help me in a really big way, the single best thing you could do is hit thumbs up and subscribe. And then when this goes on replay, um, put a comment, even if it's some emojis and just saying that you enjoyed it. Um, it helps with discovery more than you imagine. So um, thank you to everyone that's been doing it. It's actually made a really big impact. And um, finally, if you want to help out here on the channel, you can do it by either Super Chat or the applaud button on replay. Uh, I will also throw this up quickly and I'll talk about it again afterwards. Um, I'm on social media and I actually use you should follow me on Instagram if nothing else, because I post a lot of fun pictures there, but I will use stories on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, and also on tw uh, Twitter to remind you of upcoming readings. Um, TikTok, I'm starting to put reminders on too, so you can follow me there if you don't already. I'm at Nicholas Ashbaugh, no changes to the name um, on all major social media and I'm at Ashbaugh on Twitter. All right, let's meditate and let's go ahead now and um, think of that final question that you have and I'll answer it in just a moment. We're gonna do a metamorphosis, of course, because we have the little inchworm and the moth. So one thing that I thought of with the moth, and this is kind of the three of swords imagery too, like a moth to a flame, basically, sometimes they're kind of pulled in for the wrong reason. So I feel like what I was just talking about with the three of swords, you can avoid an unnecessary challenge just by listening to yourself and not necessarily kind of just going for what what everyone else is doing or kind of getting drawn in by something um, that doesn't, that maybe it looks right on paper or the money looks good, but it doesn't feel right on a soul level. So anyway, let's imagine that you are embarking on a brand new journey. I really love this Ace of Pentacles. And I think this is a gorgeous way to, um, to think about entering into the meditation. So imagine that you're going to open that beautiful door and step out into the world again. And all you see in front of you is this brilliant, bright sky. I love the shades here that we see, this, this golden hue in the sky. And the gold is great because it's going to really help you with the solar plexus as well. So feel that um, you can do anything. It's a great time to birth and rebirth. And again, I'm doing this reading on Easter, which is a great day for reincarnation or rebirth. So imagine what it is in your life that you want to reinvent or recreate. You can hold your heart or you can even hold your stomach as you walk through the door and you start to feel that within you are a different person. The minute you step from one part of the, the gate to the other, you have started the, the change or the transformation. Um, I want you to walk towards the golden light and stop at the nearest tree that you see and just sort of allow yourself to fall back and lean on the tree. And let's imagine that your, um, your chrysalis or your, your sort of transformation, it doesn't have to be as uh, literal as the caterpillar. Just see your human form and see this sort of beautiful, um, all these sort of ribbons of light starting to kind of wrap around you and move around you. Even some of the ribbons start to move out and you can sort of see these beautiful wings forming from the shoulders and out. So you have these ribbons of energy, ribbons of light. They're coming from each chakra or each energy point. And um, they're starting to create a light body that might look different from the physical body. Um, they're starting to create things in the environment that light might look difficult, uh, different than what you have in your own life. So see and feel these things around you. Close your eyes for a moment and imagine now that you are just like that little um, tesseract thing, you're going to get past this state and you're gonna jump straight into the future you. 
and see the, the change starting to happen, at least on an energetic level, which is then gonna allow your body to catch up. So close your eyes, see the golden light, see yourself transforming or changing into something new. As you're doing this, imagine that if you looked over your shoulder, you could see the relatives, the family, the teachers, the people in your life that somehow had disappointed you or didn't see what was possible. And um, just give a nod and say thank you and goodbye and see their energy fade. And now see in the future the people that you're really calling in, the friends, the family, the loved ones that see exactly what you have and they're welcoming you. So you wave goodbye and you see these new things and these new opportunities and these new people beckoning you in the future. So let's get the change done so that you are ready to step into this new life. Close your eyes, see your wings forming, see your body getting stronger, see your mind clearing, clearing the energy of each and every cell in your body. In this moment in time, I want you to take a nice deep breath. And in, I want you just to believe in yourself with, without any hesitation. I am capable of doing what I imagine. I am more than enough for myself or for others. I am ready for love, abundance, and opportunity in the highest forms. I have made the necessary changes within and I'm ready to see them around me as well. Let's make it happen today. Take a nice deep breath, inhale. On the exhale, release. Releasing the need to control, releasing any expectations, believing, letting belief and faith remain, letting go of disbelief, letting, the, letting go of the need to control, just allowing yourself to be confident, poised, and uh, ready to fill that cup right back up again, okay? Keep your eyes closed for a second. We're gonna move on to the final card. At this moment in time, I'd like you to think of the question that you have that I haven't answered or something else that's popped up in your mind over the course of this reading. And hold it there while I shuffle. If you just joined, perfect timing. You're gonna get a question answered here. You don't have to type this. This is one question that you'll, answer, uh, you'll ask psychically and then I'll answer. And I'll look at it from two perspectives as a yes and a no, and also um, on deeper levels. Okay, so um, as a yes, no, this would be a yes. We have the nine of cups, which is a overwhelmingly positive card. The card was reversed, which is showing me that for many of you, uh, there is sometimes a tendency to, it could be a perfectionist vibe. It could be sort of, heightened sensitivity or emotions, but one small thing can sometimes um, throw you off this wonderful course that we saw with the nine of um, pentacles here. So tempering your emotions is gonna be really important. I love that many of you have a positive outlook. If I pull it really close, we see all the cups in the air. Um, and this person is, it's almost like a magician. It's almost like what you, f it, there's a message there. What you feel, what you see is what you're actually going to get. So I want you to start to really um, see the, the sunny side of things, see the, the possibilities, and know that when you start to look for good news, you find it. When you start to look for bad news, you'll find that too. So start to look for some good news, start to look for some positive signs, because as we saw with the Three of Wands, even though it's not a pentacles card, it's like you've been tending the garden, you've been planting the seeds. And as we see here with the um, Eight of Pentacles, the work that you've in, in integrated and done on yourself, is going to lead to that independence that you're seeking. So I see some really great 
energy that's coming from the ability to see through the negative to the positive, to not let one misstep bring you off an otherwise positive trajectory. And, um, and finally, and I guess most importantly, there is this message of not going to extremes. Nine of Cups in reverse can be a card of overindulging. So um, I think it's important to know that you can get past anything like that, but it's important to see that you can do it. Just commit to it, say, I've got this, I, I've got this under control. So it's an answer, yes, if you had a yes, no question, but the sort of shades of detail have to do with perception, first and foremost. What you see is what you get and what you call in. And because you have a really powerful manifestation um, symbol this month with this sort of web, this cosmic web, it's so important to realize. And also with the three of wands, you want to be broadcasting the highest energy possible so that you pull in the highest opportunities possible as well, right? So really great reading for you. The only thing that I think is kind of important for you to deal with is don't let fear get in the way as we're looking at this, the soul path. Um, help is there, accept it if you'll let it come through. One setback does not a disaster make <laughs> because you still have the nine of cups here. So one setback is just there to clarify, sometimes to test you um, for your resolve, for your faith, for your ability. So you've got this, okay? Really, really lovely ending to the reading there. Great energy uh, in front of you. I feel really positive about what's happening in career for you this month and in resources for you and also just in independence. So keep on working on yourself. Predominantly, your cards were pentacles. Um, the next biggest one was swords. Um, so what you say and what you think um, is the only thing that's going to get in the way of that. The emotions came through in a, in a lesser way here with a couple of cups cards, but it's mostly thoughts that are going to be the sort of alchemic thing. So most of you know that as well. So think as positively and as um, yeah, and as higher frequency as you can, as you possibly can. All right. Final note. Um, if you want to get my book, it's available on my website. And, um, right now there's a continued sell that seems to be happening, um, in North America. If you're on Amazon, uh, actually just, just America, cause I think Canada, it's the same price, but it's like almost the same as my, um, paperback. I want to say it's like 90 cents different. So it's a good time to pick up the hardcover if you're in the U S Everywhere else, it should be about the same price as usual. And you can go to my website, uh, which Maria and Dakota put the link there for that. So uh, it's all it, in all the different countries, it's in English, but I do kind of distribute it across the globe if you're interested. It would be good for people that enjoy like Dune or Lord of the Rings or Wrinkle in Time. It's definitely science fiction and fantasy. It is not a nonfiction, maybe one day, but not, not this book, not at this time. Thank you everybody for showing up today. Um, I will be back again to read for Gemini tomorrow, same, uh, same time. And you can look at the schedule on my website if you would like some more information. Again, I pinned the link in the, um, at the very top there so you can go there to the website for more information. Thanks everyone for showing up, for doing a great job. Uh, thanks again to my moderators for your help and for all of you that were kind enough to give back. All those little contributions make a big impact and they allow me to continue to get some new cards, which is always fun for us to look at because I like to, to shake things up and um, keep it new and keep it fresh. Um, Apollo is just waking up in the background. So uh, a little goodbye there from Apollo as well. And we'll see you guys soon. Okay. <laughs> bye bye and have a great weekend.